You gonna let me talk? It's Angie. I was going to talk to you by myself today, but John, he really wanted to join in, and since we're here alone together, um, he's going to join me. Can you say hi to everybody? Say hello. Lately, I've been reading a book about this lady who goes to her neighbor's house and finds a trunk up in the attic, and inside of the trunk is a hidden compartment that holds a journal. And it's gotten me to thinking lately about my own family and wondering how neat it would be if I could find a journal or a diary of some of my family members, even my own grandparents and my parents. Um, I think it would be neat to read their words and learn about the person that they were at um, my same age of life because I, I don't have any of that. I think that there's something really special about the written word and being able to see somebody's handwriting, um, you get to capture it them in a different way. I do have a couple small tokens from someone who is important in my history, and that is of my father's grandmother, so it would be my great-grandmother on my father's side. I'm thankful that I have this stuff from her because I never have met her before, obviously. She died before long before I was born. In fact, she passed away when my grandfather was only a year old. My grandfather never knew what his mother looked like and had never seen a picture of her. And one day my mom was rummaging through helping clean out one of the barns and found a picture. And it was a picture of his mother, my grandfather's mother, and he was able to see for the first time what she looked like. And what's really cool is that my cousin and I look very similar to her. I don't know if you can see this. There she is. And this was taken probably a hundred years ago, but I think it's neat to see the resemblance between us. I have this one small card, which is the only clue that I really have to her past. This is a postcard that she sent to her husband, and if you can see on the postmark, this was sent in 1917, so that was a long time ago, almost 100 years ago. So I, I thought today that I would share with you uh, some of the ways that I've used journaling in my life that hopefully will give some insight to the people that come after me. But I'd love to hear what you do to journal and how you're preserving your life. And if you've had any fun experiences where you've been able to learn about the people in your past through reading their journals. This is my first journal that I ever had. It was given to me by my aunt. And as you can see, it's really worn out. It's been taped together. The very first entry that I have was written actually by my mother. And I drew the pictures and then she labeled what the pictures were. It's fun to see how my handwriting changed over time. That's one of the things I love about journaling looks like I would write a goal and a thought. In this journal, I have everything from the first time I got, when I got braces, to every New Year's Eve I would write something, and then I'd write something five minutes later when it was the next year, because I was weird like that. And it, in this journal contains information about my very first date, and all kinds of things. So that was my main journal for a long time. Another way that I journaled came through a class assignment that I was given in high school and I was told that I needed to make a, ta a tapestry about myself and so I typed up my life story and just put it into this book. Also included in here are my school years that I wrote up about, as you can see. In this part of this journal, I actually wrote a letter to my future children back in 1992. This journal also contains special letters from people who have written to me. This was written to me by a friend who is no longer living, so this letter is really special to me. And here's a letter from my brother that he sent to me when I was in college. I have lots of journals that are quite a bit like this. They might not have the same cover or you know look the same, but these are the kind of journals you can pick up at the bookstore and I wrote in these 
probably, I'd say, at least once a week, if not several times a week throughout um, my teenage and young adult years. I just wrote about different experiences that I was having um, as I was going through college, as I was becoming a teacher, um, dating experiences, spiritual experiences that I had. They were all written and left in there. I was away from my family for 18 months while I served a mission for my church. I would send my letters home to my family and they would save them for me and that became my journal. These are priceless to me now as I go back and read all of the experiences and the ways that I grew and developed during that time. I have kept a family blog, a personal family blog for, oh I'd say since Re before Rebecca was born and at the beginning I would print out the blog and put it into a book that I, I picked up at Walmart. You can see it here. I would print out the blog and make it cute and fun with scrapbooking materials and things. Here you can see this is a day that I journaled about um, Jacob and he was oh I'd say probably five or six years old and we lived where there was a really big we had this really huge backyard that we shared with other people and we saw a rainbow and he was so excited and he went outside and he was in the middle of the rainbow it was that big and he thought he was just so special to be able to see that rainbow and be a part of it but then the rainbow of course after time disappeared and as you can see Jacob was really really devastated by that that the rainbow went away and so I captured that not only in pictures so that I could remember but I made sure to journal a little bit about it too in my blog now in this blog book I have some of the actual printed word that it was in my blog but then I added extra notes and I really like that and I miss that with the new way that I do it, which I'll show you now. To had blurb um, take my blog and put it into a book for me. And so every year, this is what we do now. Oh, look. You heard the story about my lamb a couple days ago? There she is. That's Sue Ann. That's my lamb. There's my dad, and there's Soxy. Huh. I'm glad I found that. I looked all over for that. See, isn't that great why we have a journal and a, so that we can go back and remember? I'm glad I found that. That was meant to be. As you can see, I just write about my life with my family and then capture it and put it into this book. I like the professional quality of these and I have three of them and I have quite a few more years to catch up on. Now as far as the kids, one of their very first journals that they ever had was um, we just got a notebook at Walmart and I, went to, I it was so simple I just with a piece of paper wrote Rebecca's name right there and had her put some stickers of her choice on it Jacob has one similar to this and then every day I would just write down have them tell me what we did that day and they would write down you can see she drew a picture and if we did a craft I tried to glue it or tape it right into the journal it's funny how much they love to look back on this simple journal and to see all of the fun things that we did. It didn't hardly cost anything. I think one of these notebooks is a dollar. You can even get them cheaper when it's back to school time. But this has been a fun way for them to remember all of the things that we did. And I love seeing their cute little work and um, it didn't take a lot of time and we were able to preserve those memories. Now that the kids are older, they have their own journals and for their privacy sake, I won't be sharing those, but they do write in their journals and I ask them to write in them. Hopefully they're writing them at least once a week um, because I know that they'll value that someday. Another way that I'm journaling with them is I purchased these, I think I picked these little composition books up at Target and as you can see, this just has, it, Rebecca wrote Rebecca and Moms and this is a special notebook that we use where I write to Rebecca about something and then I put it on her pillow. She writes back to me whatever she wants. If she has a question or if she's having a hard time and maybe she doesn't feel comfortable talking to me about it face to face or around other people, then she writes it in here. And Jacob has one as well. And it's been really neat to be able to have this communication back and forth with my children. And I hope that it will continue for a long time and um, that we'll be able to grow closer to each other through having this journal. I thought of one other way that uh, I've journaled throughout the years, except the sad thing is, is that I've never kept a record of it. 
A few years after getting married, my mother-in-law and sisters-in-law, so all of the center women, started corresponding back and forth to each other once a week, sharing five things that they were thankful for for that week. Do you know how sad I am that I haven't kept that record? We've been doing it for, I'd say, six or seven years now, and I've never kept a record of that. How great would that be to be able to go back and actually have that thankful journal that I could see all the things that I was thankful for? It would probably give me a greater perspective of life and of how much I really have been blessed throughout the years. So maybe you've found some ideas today, or maybe you're thinking, oh my goodness, Angie, nobody's going to be interested in my life, or I just don't have time, or want to make the effort to, to write in a journal. It's not going to really matter. But I promise you that it is. Somewhere along the line, maybe it's going to be an, uh, somebody that's going to come after you and find it in one of your secret hidden places someday, like in the story. I would love to find that. Or maybe it's just going to be you. Maybe 20 years from now, you're going to open up a journal that you, a, a notebook that you picked up at Walmart or Target for a couple bucks and you started writing in. And you'll look back on that and you'll read it and you'll say, oh my goodness, look how much I've changed. Or, wow, what a great experience that I would never have remembered had I not written it down. I know journaling is a great thing and I hope you'll give it a try. And if you have any ways that you've found to journal or to capture moments, in your family. If you'd share them with me, I'd love to hear. Please leave a comment because it helps me to learn because there's so many different ways that we can do it and I think all of them are wonderful and we can learn and grow from each other. That's what this whole YouTube journaling experience is about. Have a good day everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care.